our church meeting. I hope that you pay attention to the words because it fits with the lesson this morning. Uh, I don't know if he knew that or if the Holy Spirit guided him to choose it. Uh, it fits with the message. You can see here that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. These are famous verses. If you go to a Baptist funeral, most of the time at the grave side, the pastor or some person will read these verses. You'll notice the end there, it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I have memorized these verses, but because I am old, mm -hmm, sometimes I forget. I will confess to that. Mm -hmm. And so I put them here. I have them on my Bible also. Okay? <laughs> but I want you to notice as we sign this verse, because I want to explain some meaning of words that you will find in these verses. It says, I, that is Paul, that is writing this to the church at Thessalonica, Okay? That's the name of the city that he established a church there. And he only stayed three weeks, probably. Limited time. And they kicked him out. They told him to leave. But he, for three weeks, he established his church and taught them rule some things. So it says, I would not have you be ignorant. Now, the sign ignorant means that they thought nothing. They knew nothing. They had not been taught. It did not mean they were limited in smart. It did not mean further thinking, limited, limited. No. It just means that they had never been taught <coughs> these things. Okay? Rather, concerning those who are but sleep is good, right? The word means dead. And Paul says, here's the picture. How many of you like to go to sleep? Yeah. Me, I sleep limited, but I like to sleep. You know, and how do you sleep? Describe to me. Think. Okay. You lie down. You stop thinking. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> this morning at 2.30. <laughs> so I got up and got my computer and worked on it for almost two hours and then took a nap. <laughs> okay? Uh, that's my habit, okay? But you lay down, you pull the covers up, and you close your eyes, and you feel nothing. And maybe five hours, six hours, you wake up. Paul is describing death for a Christian. Person received Jesus Christ as Savior, when you die, it's the picture of going to sleep here, and you wake up in heaven. Okay? You understand that? So when he says, those that are asleep, he means they have died, finished. Okay? They've been buried. They're forgotten. They're done. That you sorrow not as others who have no hope. What does that mean? 
That means that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have hope, not maybe, but if, yeah, no, 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 no. You know that you're going to wake up in heaven. That's the hope. Now, in Ephesians, it says that those who have never received Jesus Christ as Savior have no hope. No hope. So, Paul is describing to the church there, he's saying, these people who were saved, finished, they died, they've been buried, you leave their bodies there, that's okay. That's okay. If Jesus comes again, as we'll see here, they'll be all right, okay? So, for if we believe, or believe, I don't like the sign believe, okay? I like believe. Meaning, truth grasp. You see, we tell people you need to believe in your heart, and then we say believe. Okay, eh, forget it. All right. If we believe that Jesus died, rose again, you believe that? That means you're saved, you see. If you believe that Jesus died, that's the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried on the third day. He rose again. That's the gospel. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So if you believe this, you're saved. Now, Paul adds to them, probably here, where he had not preached, not yet. And it says, even so, them, people who have died in Jesus up here, asleep, will God bring with him. Okay? Let's go on. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Jesus taught this in John chapter 14. Okay? And it says, that we who are alive and remain. Now you see there's two groups of Christians. The dead Christians and now the live Christians. Okay? Alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That's what you sung this morning. Okay? And you said, believe, believe, believe. Yes, I believe that. Okay? All right. Where the Lord we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent. That means to go first, to go before. The English word today means to prevent. But it does not mean in the Greek, in the, in the Bible, it means that well, I'm alive now, and Jesus come back, I'm gone. Mercy on you dead people. Mm -mm. You see, Paul is going to explain that. Not go before those who are dead. All right? For the Lord himself, the Lord himself, in Acts chapter 1, when Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, said to his disciples, You go wait in Jerusalem. I'll send the Holy Spirit. And then he ascended into heaven. The disciples, same as we would. Angels came down and said, hey, why are you gazing? Jesus said to go to Jerusalem and wait. So obey. Okay? He says that he shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, 
and with the trump of God risen. When Jesus comes, those that have died, their graves are going to open and they're going to come out. New bodies, okay? Then we who are alive, our bodies are going to change. And then the two of us will be caught up together. That's what it says. That we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? And uh, to be with the Lord uh, and shall be ever with the Lord. Understand this. Comfort. If your family member dies that they're saved, you can understand that you have a hope that one day, whether you are alive or dead, you will be caught up together and meet the Lord in the air. Okay? Now, I want to show you something. We many times say that Jesus is coming back. Do you understand that Jesus is coming back two times? Oh yeah. Let me explain this to you. Okay. I remember several years ago, the deaf learned the sign. You remember that? Only sign that with God. I'm not. I had a beginning. I had a birth. God, this is everlasting. Always, always, always in the future. And when you do this, it means always, always in the past. You and me were not always in the past. We only have eternal life. God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Okay, you understand that? Okay, this is eternity in the past. This line is time. Time began and time will end. Okay? See? Because eternity past, then begins time, ends time, and begins eternity future. But time is limited. Time is limited to people on the earth. God is not limited by time. You and I are limited by time. I'm limited by time. I see that clock going, you know, using up my time. We are governed by time, okay? So, beginning of time, Adam and Eve. Okay? You know the story. Going on then the time to Abraham, or Abraham, Abraham, and then on into Moses, and then the crucifixion. Okay? We're going on 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 time. Began after the crucifixion began the church. The church is not back here. None. The church began crucifixion on. Okay? So, we put it right here. This is 2021 now. Okay? You got that? You understand? Okay. Alright. So, this is now. Okay? There is coming in the future that we sung about. When Jesus will leave heaven and come, 
we who are saved, whether dead or alive, will meet Jesus in the air. Okay? That's called rapture. R-A-P-T-U-R-E. We sign it, rapture. Yeah. Okay. So we will be in heaven or someplace up in there. This is the judgment seat of Christ, where every saved person will stand before Jesus and be judged for our work, our service. If you finish saved, you will stand before Jesus and explain how you use your life, your skills, your experience to serve God. Hmm. Not to judge for salvation. <coughs> if you receive Jesus Christ as Savior or not, you determine salvation or not. Okay? This is a judgment for works for ourselves. <coughs> Seven years. Seven years on the earth. People who have rejected Jesus Christ, who have shook their fist in the face of God, will stay. They will not be raptured. Only saved people will be raptured. All of the others will be left. Seven years are horrible. Judgment of God on the earth and people because of their evil. Okay? Seven years. You read about that in Revelation. Beginning, I think, in chapter 5, beginning in chapter 6, all the way to the end of 19. It describes this horrible judgment, the wrath of God that is poured out. You know, the interesting thing is that there's a verse that said, although they were suffering and gnawing on their teeth, yet they refused, they blasphemed the name of God. Seven years. Then, at the end of seven years, Jesus will come back to earth. Do you remember in Acts chapter 1, we told you uh, first just recently, where Jesus said to his disciples, go in Jerusalem, wait. And the angels came and they said, the same Jesus that you see ascending into heaven will come in the same way. How did Jesus ascend in heaven? He's standing here on the earth. So the Bible describes it, that Jesus is going to come back, he's going to touch the earth. And there he's going to establish for here 1,000 years rain on this earth, and it's going to be fantastic. Rule of right action. His government will control 1,000 years on this earth. At the end of that 1,000 years, this is called the great white throne judgment. And every person that stands before that judgment will be cast <coughs> into the lake of the fire for I want us to see this morning what if Jesus comes back Jesus coming and 
all in this, explains it, explains it, explains They believe that Jesus is coming any day. The other was introduction, okay? So you just wait. The restaurants are open at one, and it'll be all right. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, the rapture, okay? Understand the rapture, not the, the second time that Jesus is coming at the end of the seven-year tribulation, but the first time that Jesus will come. It is called... The rapture. The rapture. Let's talk about it. First of all, it's going to be a surprise. You know why it's going to be a surprise? Because no person on this earth that's living or dead know the date or the time. You know, some people curious, they asked Jesus, they said, when are you coming back and establishing all of these kind of things? And Jesus said, eh, it's not for you to know the day. Only my heavenly Father knows the day when I'm coming back. But you know what? People think, oh, I can determine. I can analyze. I can read the scriptures and you do and count, count, the group, the group, the group. Oh, the Lord's coming back in 1988. And he prints a book, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back. How many of you believe that Jesus came in 1988? Raise your hand. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> because if Jesus came back in 1988, that means all of you were left. And although we're going through some difficult time, it's not the same as the seven-year tribulation time. We cannot know the date. It's going to happen. It's going to be a surprise. I don't like surprises. You like surprises? I remember back when I was 15, I was living with an aunt and uncle in Georgia, and they gave me a surprise birthday party. I had never had a birthday party before, and it surprised me. I remember in Wichita, and you know the depth, I, I know, they, they think I'm hearing, okay? <laughs> And they can and I just catch it. And I mm -hmm, okay, I didn't see that. But some way they surprised me on my old 50 birthday. And my wife just went along with it so smooth. I finished preaching at church, and they said, my wife said, you know. I would like Chinese food today. And I said, fine with me. <laughs> we go to our favorite restaurant, Chinese, and I see a deaf man standing there. And I said, oh, no. I don't like to eat with deaf people. Uh -huh. I, I don't. I, I know. But you have to talk. You know, sign, sign, sign. There's your food on the plate. And it's leaving and it's getting colder and colder. And, and it's just leaves there. Then I know people say, well, you're oh. But you have to get it into your mouth to pull it out, you know. Oh, but anyway, I said, I don't want to eat with the deaf. So my wife just walks up and opens the door, walks in, there's two doors, and she just, and it says, uh, please wait to be seated, and my wife just goes in. I said, okay, I follow her. And so we went around the corner, uh-huh, 
large table. All the dead were there. Balloons and all of this. Happy birthday. Surprised me. Yeah. I don't like surprises. And I ate with the dead, yes. So anyway, don't like surprises, but Jesus said, only my father knows the dates that he's coming back. And one day, God the Father will say to the Son of Jesus, Go. And Jesus will come and meet in the air. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> but second, it's going to be quick. Quick. First Corinthians chapter 15 describes it this way. He said that Jesus will come, our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Now, it not mean wink, it just means and it's finished. The other word is in a moment, and I checked the meaning of that word, and it means it can't be separated. It can't be divided. It's a, and it's finished. That's quick. You know, there's some people that think, oh, well, when I see people say, sitting there, whoop, 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 and I'll be, oh, Jesus, come, hey, I sent you a Savior. Okay, 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 I'm up. Uh -uh. Not enough time. It went too, too late. Too late. Is going to happen quick. In a moment, twinkling of an eye, and it's done. You will have no time. Oh, I need to witness to my family over here, my, my mother, my father, my oh no, they're not saved yet. Not enough time. When Jesus comes, it's going to Also, it's for sure. There's no doubt about it. It's going to happen. Peter writes about that, First Peter, where he said, well, in the last days, that means as we approach the time for Jesus to come, it is called the last days in, in the Bible. It says, in the last days, there will be people who will, ah, uh, doubt, yeah. And I tell you this, I remember growing up in church in Florida, hearing my pastor say when I was probably seven or eight years old, that's a long, long time ago, more than 70 years ago, I heard my pastor preach that at any time Jesus could come back and he put it off and put it off for more than 70 years. Some of the old, old preachers in the past preached that Jesus could come in and they were right. It, according to the Bible, that Jesus could come at any time. But Peter said, oh, wait a minute. God is not the same as people think. And then he says, one day is like a thousand years. Now, I have not lived a thousand years, not yet. I'm working on it. Okay? <laughs> I'm working on it. I just, I just want to live as long as Moses lived, okay? That's all right. He was 120 when he died. But, and, and then he adds another, 1,000 years is the same as one day. One day is like 1,000 years. You know what that means? God is not limited by time. 
whether it's 1,000 years or 7,000 years or 100,000 years, it means nothing to God. He's not limited by time. We are limited by time, but not God. There's, there's no time with God, and it just goes on, and he thinks in the past and in the future, everything is now with God. You understand that? No. Because we are limited by time. I cannot understand that God lives in the now all of the time. I don't live in now. Now is already gone. It's a minute later. And when we finish church, it's going to be 20 minutes later. And then I may have thought, whatever. We are limited by time. We cannot understand that God does not see days or weeks or months or years or hours or minutes. It, it means nothing to God. And so when he says, I'm going to come back. He knows the day, he knows the time, because he knows everything, but it, it means nothing to you and to me. But understand, Peter says that when he promises something, he's not like people that promises. When he promises that he will come back, you can be sure that God will keep that promise. And when the right time Jesus will come, he may put it off for us, which may be more time, month, year. <coughs> In his mind, it's nothing. It's happening. It's now. It's always now. But it's sure. And it will happen. Because you study through the Old Testament, the many times that God promised something, it happened. God promised it happened. God promised it happened. All the way through the Old Testament and the end in Malachi, chapter 3, it says that because God promised that Israel was not destroyed, See, he promised David. He said, your throne will be established forever. And you read the generations, generations, and you come to Matthew and Luke, and you read that, and you'll find that Jesus is the last record of the descendants of David. You know why? Because when Jesus comes back the second time, he's going to establish the throne and he's going to rule. God keeps his promise, it will happen. Okay? First sign for serious? Serious? Jesus, the first time in the rapture, is coming for saved people only. Yep. Only saved people will be raptured. Whether they're dead and buried or whether they're alive, it will be at the same time. They will both be caught up together. But all who have refused to receive God's way for saved will be left on the earth. But that's serious. How many people in your family ever received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Your Savior? Mm -hmm. They'll be left. 
Think about many deaf people living all over the world that's never heard the gospel, never had the opportunity to read Jesus Christ as their Savior. When Jesus comes, they're not saved. They're going to be left. Serious. Which means that when we understand that, we need to get busy. Think about your friends, your family, the deaf all over the world. They're going to be left. It's serious because those that are left are going through some really difficult times. But more than one half of the people living on the earth will die because of the judgment of God. It will be a horrible time. And I believe there's some discussion about it, but in 1 Thessalonians, it seems to explain to us that if the people have heard the gospel now, when Jesus comes, that time will be finished. They will not have a second time. Serious? Yeah. Serious. Okay? You've got a sign soon? 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 Is that soon? Soon? I signed. Soon? Yeah. So, different, different, different signs for, um, but it will be soon. interesting. I have a message that I preach. What's the last message that Jesus gives to the church? Any idea? What's the last message that Jesus gives to the church? What's the last? Sentence. Explain to me. What's the last message that Jesus said? Okay. All right. All of those are good answers, but not the right answer. <laughs> ah, the last answer is found in the last chapter of the Bible. You want to open to Revelation chapter 22? Yeah. yeah. Revelation chapter 22 is the last word from Jesus to the church. Revelation chapter 22. And if you have a Bible with red words, that's Jesus speaking. Well, there's three times. You go ahead and read them. 7 and 12 and 22, I think it is. Three times. Almost the same words. A little bit different.
red words, right? It means that Jesus is speaking with or to John. John wrote Revelation, okay? Now, to condense it all, they're really, the message is this. In verse 7, Jesus said, Behold, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. I come quick. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. You know what he's saying? Blessed are you who obey the commandments found in the Bible that applies to you. So before Jesus comes again, so he expects you and me to be obedient. The first command that we are to obey is to be baptized. Remember in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, it says, Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, then teaching them. Obey. You don't have to pray about, Lord, you want me to be baptized. I, I was thinking about that. Pray. You show me, please, if I need to be. No. All you need to do is obey. You receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Obey and be baptized. Finish. That's obedience. Yeah. Yeah. Or any of the other. Love one another. Huh? It's a command that we're to love one another. It's a command that we pray for one another. It's a command that we support and help one another. All of those commands. When Jesus comes, there's a verse in 1 John that says that we should not be ashamed at his coming. Uh -huh. But there's another one in verse uh, 12. <clears throat> and it says, Behold, I come quick. Oh boy. Huh. Jesus is emphasizing this, that he's coming soon. <coughs> so you better be obedient. And then he says this, My reward is with me to give to every person according as his work shall be. You know what this verse is teaching? If you go all through the New Testament, you will find that God has a plan for your individual life that includes good works. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. We've memorized verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, not in yourself, gift of God, so no person can boast. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. God has a plan for your life, and, and he's saying to John, I'm going to come quickly. And I'm going to bring reward for those who have faithfully served me, Jesus. That's what it says. And then I like John's answer. In verse uh, 20, verse 20, you'll notice we have words. Jesus is saying this. And he says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. And then John replies, Woo! Just come on. <laughs> I'm ready for you to come. Woo! Amen. That's what he said. So let it become. And yes, I'll accept if you want to come now. That's fine. Okay? So there's the question. Are 
are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you obeying? Are you serving? Mm -hmm. Are you excited? Paul said, I'm anxiously waiting for him to come back because he's going to give me a crown of righteousness. And all of those people who love his appearing. That's coming again when we meet him in the clouds. You see, Paul thought that Jesus would come in his life. It may not happen in my lifetime. I expect it. I think yes. But it may not. I may die. That's fine. Because you see, I have hope. <laughs> Whether I am dead or alive, when Jesus comes back, I'm going to rise from the dead, receive a new body. If I'm alive, my body is going to be changed. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're not ready. You've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. Jesus came right now, you will be in. And probably, if I believe right, your heart would be hard and you will never receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And at the end, will go to the place of fire. Now is the day for salvation. Mm -hmm. If you've never been saved, I would invite you to come in just a moment. But most of you, I think, probably the things you see Jesus Christ. Did you see the How are you doing? God, when you're saved, the Holy Spirit gives you a skill to help build this local church. Liberty Baptist, D, D, Death Liberty Baptist Church. You are here. God put you here for the purpose of accomplishing plan that God has to your church. You have a skill, an ability to do something for God. You see it? Or you just see it? Do we have it? Now all of you can't be pastor. All of you can't be Sunday school teacher. We understand but you have a skill. The Holy Spirit has given to you. It's a gift. You didn't pray for it. You didn't ask for it. But that skill will help you to do what God has planned for your life. But you have to surrender. You have to do it. You meet Jesus at the judgment seat of God. <coughs> you will explain. And 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 let me let me just say quickly. Jesus is not going to accept the to well I'm dead. I <coughs> Jesus 
truly coming again. It will be a surprise time. You don't know the day. It will be sudden in the moment, the twinkling of eye. You'll have no more time to decide to do nothing. It's finished. And it's for sure. God promised it. Jesus promised it in John chapter 14. He said, I will come again. That's a promise from Jesus himself. And Jesus cannot lie. God cannot lie. He's coming. It's for sure. It's going to happen. It will be a serious time. Your loved ones, your friends, Deaf people all over the world will be left because they've not received Jesus. <coughs> it should be seen. It could happen today. You remember we said, what if? and our rule with Jesus, all of these things we need to do now. Help us to be ready for Jesus.